OK, so on this one, I immediately looked at this linear system. And I said, you know what, all right, these are not in the form of y equals mx plus b form. But it's very easy for us to go ahead and convert them over to that form. So that's why I figured, hey, you know, let's do the problem. Why not? So a lot of times when dealing with the linear system, especially graphing them, we know we, to solve it, we have to graph on the same coordinate plane. Um, but I need to be able to graph both of these. And I can use the x and y intercepts method if I like to. But I think these are going to be better suited for us to solve by converting them to um, slope intercept form. So to convert to slope intercept form, which is right here, we need to isolate our variable y. So what I like to do sometimes is circle the, the y. So therefore, that's going to tell me I need to undo everything that's happening to that, um, just like we solve our literal equations. So the first thing we always undo is addition and subtraction. And I look at this and I notice, all right, well, I see a plus sign. But what's being added or subtracted to the y? Well, this 3x is. And just to kind of prove my point, if I rewrote this, I could rewrite this as y plus 3x, right? Because that 3x is positive. So it's going to be a plus of 3x. Therefore, to undo the addition of 3x, I need to subtract 3x on both sides. Well, positive 3x minus 3x, that adds up to 0. Uh, 0x, which is just 0. So therefore, I'm left with a y equals 5 minus 3x. Now, this will be the last time I'm probably going to do this um, without immediately making the correction. However, I wanted you to see it, because a lot of students want to write it as 5 minus 3x. However, we want to convert it back to mx, uh, mx plus b form. Therefore, we want the 3x to be in front of the 5. So make sure, though, it's a minus 3x. So when I rewrite this, I'm going to take that sign with it. And then the 5 is positive, so it would be plus 5. Now I have an equation where I know my y-intercept is at 0, comma 5, and my slope is at negative 3 over 1. Right? Because remember, b is your y-intercept, which is a coordinate point, And slope is your uh, rate of change, which we write as a fraction. So now, to graph this, I go up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now, since my rate of change is negative, it can either be negative up top or in the bottom. It doesn't really matter. But if I keep the negative sign up top, that's going to tell me to go down 3. And then that's in the negative direction. And then over 1 in the positive direction. I could also go up 3 in the positive direction, but then left 1 in the negative to still keep my slope negative. All right. So there's just a rough sketch of that first equation. Now I need to graph this equation, so I need to isolate it. Again, I have the addition of the x, so I'm going to subtract the x. Then I have negative y equals, now I'm just going to rewrite it how it should be all right, without having to go through all those extra steps and explanations, because hopefully you can see why I wrote the negative x in front of the positive 7. But now I have this negative y. I need to solve for y, not negative y, so I'll divide by negative 1. Now it's really important when we do this, negative divided by negative, those will divide into 1. So I'm left with y equals. Be careful, when I'm dividing this, I need to make sure I divide the negative 1 into both of my terms. Since they're separated by addition, or if they're separated by subtraction, you have to make sure you divide into both of the terms. So therefore, now I have a positive x minus 7. So looks like I'm actually going to have to keep continue this um, down. Uh, so one, two, oh, OK. I wrote this line really bad. OK. So it's down 1, 2, 3, over 1. Down 1, 2, 3, over 1. I'm just trying to get a good idea of what this line is going to look like, because I know I'm going to come down to it. That's down 1. All right, so then down 1, 2, 3. To the right, one more. OK. So just trying to get a better idea. That's why grid paper is really helpful. So now I go and graph this, which is down negative 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And negative 7 tells go up 1, right 1. Up 1, up 1, right 1. Up 1, right 1. So I'm assuming if I did my graph correctly, that I would have now this point is going to be at this coordinate point, which is over 1, 2, 3, down 1, 2, 3, 4. So the intersection point, as long as I did my graphing correctly, is at the coordinate point 3, comma, negative 4. And actually, I can check my work. Uh, number 12. Yep, 3, comma, negative 4. I did it correctly. Good. So now once we have one solution here, we know that we're going to have a consistent 
um, solution and linear system, and it also is going to be independent. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you graph your linear system. Thanks.